Number 10. Grenade Selfie There are certain things you're supposed to know not to mess with, and potentially dangerous explosives, well, they're one of those things. Two men were traveling in Russia when they came across a live grenade. In this case, it was a grenade that just so happened to have the pin pulled out, which for those of you who don't know, that means the grenade is armed and could very easily explode. Obviously, the reason it wasn't already detonated was a fault in the system, which you might think means it was okay to pick up, and yet the opposite was true. That just made it even more dangerous. The two men didn't know that and decided it would be a great idea to pick up the grenade and then take a selfie with it. As you might expect, they didn't survive the experience. In fact, the grenade blew up mid-photo shoot. But rather ironically, while the men died, the phone somehow survived, and thus was used as evidence to show how the two men died. Usually that would be the end of this dumb cause of death, but here's the twist. This was just one case of selfies gone wrong to the extreme degree, because Russia had a slew of them that prompted the government to issue warnings about taking selfies with dangerous objects. A cool selfie could cost you your life, the interior minister warned in a new leaflet packed with tips, such as a selfie with a weapon kills. Yeah, it's true. A slew of Russian people were taking pictures with loaded weapons and other munitions because they thought it would make a great shot. And it turns out they were wrong. Very, very wrong. Number 9. Michael Goodwin The case of Michael Goodwin is one of many layers. He was originally slated to be put to death, but then a change in his sentencing came in and he was given the punishment of life in prison. A change of good fortune, or at least it should have been. Living in his cell was fine, until one day he realized that the TV he had in it, due to good behavior, wasn't working. He examined it and eventually realized there was a bad wire. After taking stock of the situation and his own skill set, Goodwin felt the best option was to cut the wire with his teeth. And this was dumb on many levels, not the least of which was that due to it being a live wire, it was literally full of electricity, and thus he was electrocuted. But technically, that's not the end of the story, because there was a chance that the electrocution from the live wire wouldn't have killed him. But the repair work he was doing, he did via a metal toilet. So that amped up the power of the jolt that killed him. Ironically enough, though, Goodwin was supposed to be electrocuted before his change in sentence. His stupidity changed it back to the original verdict. And now for number 8. But first, be sure to subscribe and let me know which one you think is the dumbest in the comments below, and which ones you think could have been prevented. Number 8. How Not to Get Away with Bee Murder in 2002, a farmer in Brazil was going about his property and realized that there was a massive beehive there waiting for him. Bees can be very dangerous and potentially deadly depending on the species and a person's reaction to their painful stings. So thus caution was needed and he did just that to an extent. To get rid of the bees, the man realized he needed to protect himself from the stings and then use fire to get rid of the hive which in this case was a good two-part plan more or less. He went and prepared to burn the bees away, but his idea of protecting himself was putting a plastic bag over his head and sealing it tight. And if you're already seeing the problem with this, then you'd be much smarter than this man. Not the least of which is a plastic bag wouldn't stop bee stings, but it gets worse because he forgot about having to breathe. He didn't put holes in the bag so oxygen could get through, and thus he found himself suffocated by the tree where the bees were still very much alive. Number 7. Backwards Thinking Driving is dangerous no matter what people like to think. There are many accidents on the roads of the world every single day, and things can happen when you don't think things through, even an act as simple as parking. A certain 58-year-old woman from Australia, for example, forgot something rather important one day to put her car in park, and it cost her big. So how did this happen? First and foremost, the reason she stopped the car on the way to the grocery store was because she wondered if she'd remembered the plastic bags in the trunk. Those plastic bags she used a lot thanks to a recycling mindset. So she responsibly pulled over, got out of the car, and checked the trunk. But this was the fatal mistake. Because when she was doing this act, the car, which was not in park, started to roll backwards right when she was behind it, thus knocking her down and running her over, and the woman died. Not the way she expected the day would go, no doubt. Number 6. Game Over there are many people who think that video games can have rather addictive properties, to the extent that some gamers will play the games they love for many hours on end. Now, there are parts of that that can be very true, but usually these are very dedicated gamers and not the normal set. However, in South Korea, video gaming is a lifestyle. 
as one man named Lee tried not just to do, but to embody. During one session with the game StarCraft, he decided to play for 50 hours straight, without eating, without sleeping, without taking care of his body in general. The only breaks he took were to go to the bathroom when he really couldn't hold it anymore. If you can see the problem with this, then you know where this is going, because after playing for those 50 hours and not taking care of his body, he died. Doctors cite that it was a mix of heart failure and exhaustion that caused his sudden death, both of which could have been easily prevented if he just went and did very basic things like sleep for even a few hours and get something to eat in the course of 10 to 15 minutes after every few hours. So thus he died trying to live a lifestyle that was literally unobtainable. A lesson for all of us for sure. Number 5. Lava Lamp Bomb There are many ways to decorate rooms, but one that is very popular with people is lava lamps. That being said, there are rules to follow when first getting them and heating them up. Mainly do it slowly or else. Enter Philip, who did not want to follow this rule at all, because he wanted to see his lava lamp in full flow. Being impatient, he decided to put the lamp on the stove and use its heat to make the lava lamp go. And it should be noted that doing this is in direct contradiction to the warnings on the label of the item. After a little while, the lamp exploded from the pressure, and the shards of glass that were launched from the lamp went straight into Philip killing him. This story was so pervasive that Mythbusters actually tested the circumstances, and they found it could be done in the right situation, though Philip did prove that himself tragically enough. Number 4. Did you hear something? The notion of things coming out of the sky to kill you is not new. However, something you wouldn't expect to be killed by without noticing it is a helicopter coming down on you. Yet in British Columbia, a student in the area was indeed killed when a helicopter crashed into the ground and killed him. The obvious question that would need to be asked here is why didn't he see or hear anything? The first answer is because he wasn't facing the correct direction apparently, which I guess makes sense. And the second part to that question is that the student had headphones on with the volume turned up real loud, which was later confirmed by an eyewitness. So thus, even when a massive piece of machinery was heading his way, he couldn't hear it. Thus, he got hit and died. The people in the helicopter died as well, and the whole incident was marked as very strange. Number 3. Clean Sweep In today's day and age, a chimney is not as standard in homes as they used to be in the past decades, mainly because modern advances in heating make them less useful, and they can be a bit of a pain to clean. And should you not clean them, you risk burning down your home. Enter Marco, who was a man with a chimney in his house. He started to clean his chimney in the basic way by using a broom, but he realized that it just wouldn't work. So he had a creative idea. Using a chain and a weight, he could have the broom go all the way through the chimney without much effort. All in all, kind of not a bad idea. But the weight aspect of this plan is where things got dumb, because he decided to use a grenade. But wait, there's more. Because not only was he using a potentially explosive device to send down a chimney, he also felt he needed to make sure it didn't get off the chain he was tying it to. So he welded it on. Once the welding fire touched it, it exploded and Marco was killed. That's what happens when you really don't think plans like these through. Number 2. Getting Big Air For those who don't know, kite surfing is a respected endeavor in which people use kites that are like parachutes to skate across the water and sometimes get really big air. It's a complicated thing, but to those who know what they're doing, it can be quite the rush. However, the thing you must look out for is the massive wind currents because they can literally spell your doom. And that's what happened to Adrian Monnoyer. During a particularly windy day, weather reports told surfers to stay off the oceans. But many, including Adrian, refused and thus went kite surfing. As Adrian was doing this, he got caught up in a gale of wind that was 100 miles per hour. It was so strong that it literally lifted him up into the air and sent him inland to which he would go and hit many buildings with his body, including a massive hotel. And then after finally being disconnected from his kite, he would fall to his death from 50 feet up. This bizarre death could have easily been avoided, but it wasn't because of the thrill of the sport. Number 1. Stay in the vehicle When you go on a safari, especially one that has various animals of incredible sizes, one of the most important rules is to not leave the vehicle at any point unless specifically told. And this is for people's safety as well as the safety of the animals. But for two elderly German tourists at a Spanish safari, they decided not to heed the many warnings that were put across the safari park and get out of the vehicle to go and enjoy the animals more. 
As if to prove the point, near immediately after they got into the car, a set of tigers pounced upon them and killed them both. The park didn't release too much information about the couple, but it was clear that they didn't obey the rules, and it literally cost them their lives. Number 8. The Question of Giants When it comes to myths about the world we call our own, there are many that stand the test of time, and one of them without a doubt is giants. Giants are more than just people who are tall, though we will discuss those. They're massive creatures that were said to be able to walk alongside mountains, be mighty warriors, and even make weapons for the gods themselves. But in terms of real proof of giants, well, they're rather thin. There has been some fossil evidence that indicate that there have been certain kinds of giants over the years. But are they truly what we claim them to be? The other question here is, what is the purpose of us wanting to find out about giants? Part of it, in truth, is about mystery and wonder. Specifically, the mystery and wonder that there could have been creatures like this roaming around our world once upon a time and living among the humans that we call our ancestors. There are even tales of giants in somewhat modern times via certain religions. Most of all, though, many might consider this as a missing link of sorts, one that would help further explain part of the world, as well as flesh out our own amazing history. So perhaps the question, did giants exist, is really one about wondering what else existed out in the realms of the world before we fully understood it. Number 7. Giants in Mythology Without a doubt, one of the biggest reasons that people well and truly believe that giants existed at one time is because of all the legends and stories that have carried across the world about massive creatures that we refer to as giants. For example, in Greek mythology, there were giants via the Cyclops, one-eyed towering beasts that were not just the makers of Zeus's lightning bolts, but also the terrors of men. In the Odyssey, a Cyclops trapped Odysseus's men and ate them until they eventually poked his eye out. But the stories do not stop there, and neither are they that far back in history. In the Bible, there are numerous references to giants of all kinds. The Book of Numbers includes a discouraging report by spies which Moses sent into Canaan. We can't attack these people, they're stronger than we are. All the people we saw there are of great size. We saw the Nephilim there, the descendants of Anak come from the Nephilim. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. Joseph has also described the Amorites as giants in his Antiquities of the Jews, circa AD 93, indicating that some sort of fossils may have been on display at the time for which reason they removed their camp from Hebron, and when they had taken it, they slew all the inhabitants. There were till then left the race of giants, who had bodies so large and countenances so entirely different from other men that they were surprising to the sight and terrible to the hearing. The bones of these men are still shown to this very day, unlike to any credible relation of other men. And of course, there's the most famous giant in the Christian Bible, Goliath, whose name has now become synonymous with giant size. Though historians argue about how big he actually was, he was said to be so tall that the Jewish nation trembled before him. He was said to be anywhere from 6 to 9 feet tall, and that still isn't the end of them. From the Native American tellings of giants to the Norse and their ice giants that ruled in their own realm, giants are everywhere in mythology, which is why many people wonder just what is the truth about them and whether they honestly did exist. Because if so many nations and people from across the world wrote about them, was it all just mythology or was it all true in a certain way? These are the questions that have led to searches about giants. And now for some unexplained discoveries, but first be sure to hit that giant big red subscribe button before you go. Number 6. Giants in Nevada When it comes to wanting to prove something is real or not, the best way by far is to show evidence of things like bones or clear traces of where things could have come from. And there have been sets of bones that point to giants actually existing, believe it or not. And one of the biggest pieces of evidence came from Nevada. The caves near Lovelock have been explored over the years, but when a new cave opened up, a shocking new discovery was made. Bones of people who were measured to be at least 10 feet tall, almost 2 feet bigger than the tallest man ever recorded in modern times. 
What's more, there wasn't just one of them, there was a whole set. And all of them had red hair, which would seem to point to these giants either being in the same family or at least the same race. There's been a lot of speculation as to whether these findings are legitimate. And if they're not, how did they come to be in the cave in the first place? And if they are giants, what happened to these giants? The fact that the bones point to their giant size is a good indication of what this might be or may possibly be. But the question of the red hair is something else entirely. Because red hair is something you'd usually associate with Europeans. So did settlers of giant size once come from that region to Nevada? Or was there something else more at play here? Number 5. Giant of Castano If you wish for another look at potential bones that could point to giants having actually existed at one point in time, then you need not look further than the Giant of Castano. The bones were discovered by the anthropologist George Vacher de la Puja in the Bronze Age Cemetery of castano le Les, France during the winter of 1980. His findings were published in the journal Le Nature, Volume 18, 1890, Issue 888. The height of the giant was estimated at about 11 feet 6 inches, according to de la Puja, and the bones were dated to the Neolithic period. The journal includes a photo engraving of what was identified as the humerus, tibia, and femoral mid-shaft of the giant compared to a normal size humerus in the center. De La Puja was one to write extensively about his findings, and here is what he had to say about the bones. I think it unnecessary to note that these bones are undeniably human, despite their enormous size. The first is the middle part of the shaft of a femur, 14 centimeters length, almost cylindrical in shape, and the circumference of the bone is 16 centimeters. The second piece is the middle and upper part of the shaft of a tibia. The circumference is 13 centimeters at the nutrient foramen. The length of fragment is 26 centimeters. The third, very singular, was regarded by good anatomists as the lower part of a humerus. The volume of the bones were more than double the normal pieces to which they correspond. Judging by the usual intervals of anatomical points, they also involve lengths almost double. The subject could have been a likely size of 3 meters 50. Naturally, the bones were eventually studied, and though there were some anomalies, it was also noted that they were indeed human and from a very tall race. Number 4. More Giant Races? Believe it or not, the findings mentioned were not the only ones found of potential giants. Not long after the Giant of Castano, another interesting discovery was made. It's of some interest that in 1894, press accounts mentioned a further discovery of bones of human giants unearthed at a prehistoric cemetery in Montpellier, France, 5 kilometers southwest of Castano. While workers were excavating a waterworks reservoir, skulls 28, 31, and 32 inches in circumference were reported alongside other bones of gigantic proportions, which indicated they belonged to a race of men between 10 and 15 feet in height. The bones were reportedly sent to the French Academy of Sciences for further study. So that right there is a set of many giants who have been found within a whisker of one another. Could this mean that there were indeed giants among us at one point in time? That they lived in groups and even died in them. What is the meaning of these findings? Number 3. Tallest Man Today Over the generations of human life, there have been many large and tall people. But in the world today, the largest living human is a man named Sultan Kosin, a man who when measured in 2009 was the first person to be over 8 feet tall, as measured by the Guinness Book of World Records in over 20 years. His full height, which was measured a few years after, is 8 feet 2 inches tall. Sultan Kosin was born in 1982, but surprisingly, his growth spurt didn't happen until he was about 10 years old. If you're curious as to how something like this happens, it's a rare condition called pituitary giantism. Your body has a natural entity in the brain called the pituitary gland, and it's that gland that allows you to grow via hormones. It regulates how much you grow based on genetics. However, at times, it can basically run amok, causing giantism like with Sultan Kosin. There are many struggles to have an unnaturally sized body, including not being able to fit into many buildings, finding the right sized clothing, and participating in certain average events. However, Sultan Kosin has made the most of his size. He's gotten married and has even joined the circus and starred in Hollywood movies. And while he may be the largest among us today, he's but one of many large people in the world, untold amounts of which are over 7 feet tall. Number 2. Why are they gone? So let's ask a question that might be rattling around in your head right now. To put it simply, if there were giants out there at some point in time, why are they gone now? 
The easiest answer to that is physiology. While tall people can live among us, the taller you get, the more problems you have. From getting enough nutrition to fuel your body, to having a place to live that can fit your frame and more. It's hard enough for a giant in our modern context to live with all the amenities and technologies we have, so in the Neolithic age, or before the ages of even basic technology, they would have had an incredibly hard time living. Plus, it's possible that other races hunted them down because of their size, not unlike certain animals that were deemed too large and were hunted to extinction for one reason or another. Given the history of the world that we know of, it's easy to see many ways in which giants could have lived and then died out. Number 1. Will we ever find proof of giants? That's the question, and one that many honestly aren't sure of. On one hand, there is some fossil evidence that giants of a sort did live amongst us at one point in time. But in terms of finding a true set of giant bones, not so much. Which is one of the biggest hurdles in trying to prove that giants were real. Because if they were, why haven't we found more bones? And why were they only found in certain regions? The mysteries of them are not easily solved, but the potential is there if the search continues, which in this case is almost a certainty. Number 10. Pangolin Many creatures on Earth can claim to have armor of some kind, including armadillos, turtles, crabs, and more. But there's only one true fully armored creature on Earth, and that is known as the pangolin. One look at a pangolin and you'll see that this is a literal armored mammal, something that doesn't exist in the world outside of it. That's right, this is a unique creature because there's nothing else truly like it. The shell is made of keratin, which is the same material that's in hair, claws, hooves, antlers, and more. While certain mammals have shells or hardened skin, it's nothing like the pangolins. The sadness of this story, though, is that the pangolin is one of the most trafficked animals in the world. Also, they're threatened by poaching as their meat is used in traditional Chinese medicine, thus making it a threatened species. Even weirder than that, though, is that despite its defensive capabilities, it's known to eat ants and termites. This is the reason the pangolin is compared to anteaters, even getting the rather interesting nickname of scaly anteater, as its tongue is rather large, similar to that of an anteater. But don't confuse them, they actually have a lot of differences. So if you ever run into one of them, try and give them the name they honor. Number 9. Hawksbill Sea Turtle There are many turtles in the world today, but few are as special and as unique as the Hawksbill Sea Turtle. You might think that it's just a regular turtle. I mean, it's a decent size, it has the right colored skin, it looks perfectly normal under most conditions. But if you look at it in the right light, you'll see a very unique feature. It's fluorescent. Yes, this turtle is neon green and bright red. It's the first time it's been confirmed that a reptile has these incredible colors. So it is quite amazing that this particular turtle somehow has a skill that none of the others of its species that we know of anyways are capable of. The discovery was made in 2015 by David Gruber, who was in the Solomon Islands. During a night dive, he came across one of these turtles, and he said it looked like a big spaceship. Gruber thinks it's too early to conclude why these hawksbill turtles have the ability to fluoresce. However, it is known that fluorescence is generally used to attract prey or even as some form of communication. It's very difficult to study this species due to the small population that has declined by about 90%, so we'll probably be left wondering what these exotic colors are in this turtle. Number 8. Jerboa The jerboa looks like a rodent, but when you see its huge legs, small and thin arms, and its long tail, you'll realize that this is not a typical rodent. It may be the strangest rodent on the face of the earth, and it's a bit ugly to be honest. The legs might remind you of a kangaroo since the jerboa is completely balanced on those legs. What's more, like a kangaroo, they're very athletic with them. They're fast, capable of running up to 15 miles per hour on those legs. Also, if you look at them, they have small hands. That's why their legs are the ones that support their weight and propel them when they run. They're found in the deserts of Africa, as well as in certain parts of Asia. So if you wanted to see one, you would probably have to go on a hike to one of those places. What do you think about this particular animal? I'd never heard of one before this. Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Number 7. Liger Many animals in the world have been bred to life, meaning that they weren't around before, but because of humans pairing them up, they were created. One of the more incredible of these experiments was the liger. Yes, liger as in lion and tiger. In this particular case, a male lion mating with a female tiger, though the opposite is also possible. Though it may feel fake, it's real. 
And in fact, ligers are so amazing that they're almost twice as big as their parents when fully grown. That's right, twice as big. The largest liger in existence right now is named Hercules, which is appropriate given the figure of Hercules in Greek mythology, and can be found in Myrtle Beach's Safari Wildlife Preserve in South Carolina. He's over 10 feet in length, in terms of height he's over 4 feet tall, and he weighs over 900 pounds. That is a truly massive creature. Despite being in captivity, Hercules has shown he can run over 55 miles per hour and have a running leap of over 40 feet. A super cool fact about Hercules is that he has the world record for the largest cat in the world today. Can you imagine having a kitten like that in your home? Number 6. Blue Dragon Sea Slugs Dragons are a major part of the world's lore, and sometimes you'll find creatures named after them such as the Komodo dragon. But what might surprise you is that there are sea slugs named after them too. These are the blue dragons, who are really beautiful creatures that can be found in the Indian and Pacific oceans of the world. And it's a species that is very well equipped to survive in the various waters they reside in. How so? When it's moving around, it'll swim upside down to better blend in with the water. What's more, they feed on creatures that are a lot bigger than them, like the man of war. And they have quite a sting too, which can be dangerous even to humans. Now, if you're curious as to why they're called blue dragons, that would be because of their look. Their body type is very much like the dragons of legend, including having wings and a long tail. So in some ways, they resemble dragons more than the Komodo dragon does. Number 5. Okapi When European explorers went into Africa before it was truly explored by outsiders, they seemed to have found a rare horse that had a singular horn, and thus they felt it was a unicorn. But they were wrong, it was actually an okapi. This was proven in the 1900s, when Sir Harvey Johnson was able to find and retrieve not only a pair of skulls from the so-called unicorns, but also their skin. It was here that the okapi were revealed to the rest of the world at large. Okapi are relatives of giraffes, believe it or not, and not horses or zebras like you might be thinking. As for the mischaracterization of the one horn, okapi actually have two horns, but when you look at one from the side, it does look like they have one. Despite them being drastically not like the unicorns of legend, the okapi are now referred to as the African unicorn, which no doubt drives up interest to see these very special and unique creatures. And for a moment, I kind of imagined a parallel world where unicorns existed, and now we'll have to settle for okapi. Number 4. Loris Take a look at this loris for a second. These particular species are known as the slow loris. Do you think that this creature is a danger to other animals as well as humans? The right answer is that they are arguably one of the biggest threats in the world because they have a secret weapon, poison. Loris is the only primate with poison in their systems in the entire world, making them a very unique and very deadly threat. How they do this is that they have a gland within their inner arms that secretes the poison. They'll lick it and put it on their fur, and their children's fur to protect them from predators, which can include humans. If this poison infects your system, through touch or through biting from the loris, it can cause anaphylactic shock and possibly even kill you. What's worse is that they look adorable to many, especially with their huge eyes, so thus they'll lull you into a false sense of security. Because of their tenderness, videos of slow loris as pets are some of the most viral animal videos on YouTube. Despite this, people have not understood that the slow loris in the videos are only docile because it's their defensive passive reaction to threatening situations. Have you seen any cute videos of these animals? Do you think they're harmless creatures? Let me know in the comments below. Number 3. Hairless Bear there are many kinds of bears in the world, from the basic brown and black bears to grizzly, polars, and more. But one thing that connects all of them is the fact that they most definitely have hair, which makes it odd that in a zoo in Germany, a set of three bears suddenly lost all of their hair and revealed what they looked like without fur. As you can see, they don't really look like bears at all without their fur. And these bears, which are speculated bears for the record, are by many definitions bald. Yet what makes them very much stand out from the crowd is that while hair loss in animals has been documented across many species, no one is really sure why it happened to the bears known as Dolores and the two other bears at the Lipsig Zoo. Though some are saying that this issue is bigger than just what's happening in the zoo. This problem with the speculated bears is not just in Lipsig. Zoo curator Mr. Knotzhold told the BBC World Service, there are other zoos in Europe and overseas that have the same problem. And so we've had an international work group of zoo vets looking at this for some time already. 
Gerard Bars, director of the International Bear Foundation, said he had never seen such a condition before. I can hardly believe it was a bear, although I have been dealing with bears all my life, he told the BBC's Europe Today program. The fact that animals like these exist in any capacity is unique. Yet if there were a large number of animals that had this condition, it would be easier for humans to understand all that the animal world hides. Number 2. Lyrebird Many birds in the world can do a kind of sound mimicry, including parrots, but the lyrebird takes this to a whole new level, as it can mimic any sound it hears. This is because the lyrebird has a very complex set of vocal cords, one that can change their pitch and range for a portrayal of a sound. They've been known to mimic the sound of chainsaws, car engines, barking dogs, and of course, human voices. They can also likely mimic the sound of other animals that are within their habitat potentially warding off predators by making sounds of creatures they wouldn't normally approach on their own. Weirdly, the lyrebird will use an amalgamation of these sounds like a mating call to other lyrebirds, making it arguably the most unique mating call the world has ever heard. Number 1. Mimic Octopus Octopuses are one of many creatures that are known to not just inhabit the oceans, but inhabit them in many shapes and forms. But for the one known as the Mimic Octopus, it's arguably the most intelligent of the bunch for a simple reason. Adaptive Camouflage Now you might know that various creatures, both octopus and not, have a camouflage ability to help them blend into the bottom of the ocean floor or other areas. And that's true. However, with the Mimic Octopus, they not only can blend into the floor of their areas, but they can also change their looks to resemble other creatures. So why do that? Simple, there are predators that the octopus knows it can't fight. So thus it changes its form to look like a predator of that creature, and thus it can get away. This shows not just a wide variety of forms the Mimic Octopus can take, but also its incredible intelligence to understand a situation that it's in, and then go and make itself into something that it knows will keep it safe. I think we humans can be a lot like this octopus when we don't want to be discovered or seen by anyone, don't you? Number 9. Dugong in Chains The idea of animals in chains is rarely approved of, but one thing you would never truly expect to see is that of an aquatic creature in chains, mainly because this does nothing but hurt the animal and is harsh on so many levels. Such was the case when some divers went to the island of Kukuya off North Maluku in Indonesia, and they were in for quite a shock. The waters of the area are known for being beautiful and full of life, but as they were looking around, they found a makeshift cage, with a dugong and her baby trapped inside. The mother was chained around the tail, keeping her stuck, and all the baby could do was stay beside her. The importance of how the dugongs got into those chains cannot be overstated, mainly because it was a local fisherman who had chained them up in order to make a quick buck. Apparently, the fishermen would get paid by people to get closer to the sea creatures, which is an abhorrent way of doing business. The divers that found them in this story knew that they had to act, and thus they tried to convince the fisherman to let them go, which he refused and then agreed to sort of. But the divers weren't convinced, so they took footage of the dugongs in chains, posted them to social media, and the footage went viral. After that, animal protection agencies descended on the cages to make sure the dugongs were released. When they found out they weren't, they forced the fishermen to let them go. Though the end result was positive, it could have easily gone another way. Number 8. New Jersey Deep Sea Graveyard There are many things you would expect to find in the waters off a state or country. But as the New Jersey Deep Sea Graveyard reveals, sometimes you're going to be shocked by what you see. In 1985, a man named Paul Hepler started to map out the bottom of the New Jersey coast and came upon something he didn't expect – two large locomotives. Specifically, the trains were Planet Class 222T models, which is a very rare model of train, and one of the oldest models of steam trains that were ever made in the United States. But that's not the end of the creepiness, because unlike what you might expect, these train locomotives were upright – perfectly so, in fact. They didn't look like they'd just been dropped there, but rather placed there. There have been many dives to these trains to study them, but all the results report the same thing. It's not clear how they got there. The popular theory is that they came off of a ship. But if that was the case, how was there no major damage to the trains as well as how they were both landed in an upright position? Also, despite them clearly being made, there's no record of them going missing. So how exactly did they get there? 
Number seven, the structures of Zakynthus. Believe it or not, there are plenty of underwater cities throughout the world that have either been documented, as in cities sunk by natural disasters and such, or still remain a mystery, like Yoganani Monument. But in the case of Zakynthus, an island off the coast of Greece, a much bigger mystery needed to be solved, and the results were a bit shocking, mainly that various structures had been found in the waters off the island and based on their size and shape appeared to be the remnants of a lost city. However, it was later revealed that this was the result of a geological phenomenon that had been happening for many millions of years. Archaeologists with the Ephorate of Underwater Antiquities of Greece were the ones to take a look at these structures, which resembled columns, and they determined that while they were structure-like, there were other clues to show this wasn't a true city. The site was discovered by snorkelers and first thought to be an ancient city port lost to the sea. Lead study author Julian Andrews, a professor at UEA's School of Environmental Sciences, said in a statement, There were what superficially looked like circular column bases and paved floors, but mysteriously, no other signs of life such as pottery. So if they aren't man-made things, what are they? They're believed to be a natural plumbing system, believe it or not, one that helps release gases from below the sea floor and into open waters, which is a rather unique way of getting things out into the open water. Number 6. Creatures of the Mariana Trench There are many places in the world that humanity has only lightly touched, and one of the most hard-to-reach places on that list is the Mariana Trench, mainly because it's over 36,000 feet below sea level. Only a handful of men have been able to reach down them, and that was by diving down there via specialized submersibles. And what they found out was not only unique, but also really creepy. For within these deep waters, one wouldn't expect to find a lot of life, but you'd be wrong. In fact, the deep waters of the ocean, especially the Mariana Trench, are filled with life that will amaze and terrify you. Creatures such as the frilled shark, the anglerfish, the barrel-eyed fish, the vampire squid, the viperfish, tube worms, goblin shark, and more live and thrive in this area of the ocean, which boggles the minds of many because of the incredible pressures those waters have. What's more, though a few have been down there, there's no doubt many more unique and creepy creatures to be found because we have come nowhere close to mapping it out fully. Number 5. Giant Pyrosome the giant pyrosum is known as the unicorn of the sea, because while it is known to exist, there have not been many who've gotten to see it up close, let alone take photos and videos of it. But off the coast of Tanzania in August 2013, some divers did indeed get to witness it and the creepy form that it takes. Pyrosums, for those who have never seen them or heard about them before, are free-floating colonial tunicates that usually live in the upper layers of the open ocean in warm seas, although some may be found in greater depths. Pyrosums are cylindrical or cone-shaped colonies of up to 60 feet long, made up of hundreds to thousands of individuals known as zooids. You might be thinking, but if they're all individuals, how can they form a singular body like this? That's because every individual is wrapped up together in a gelatinous tunic, and it's this that divers see if they're lucky enough to encounter the creature. And seeing one up close is very unique experience because it's not like anything the ocean offers usually. Despite being composed of many organisms, it doesn't move freely on its own like you'd expect. Rather, it gets pushed and pulled by the currents and tides of the water that it's in, which is not how you would expect a creature of the ocean to move, yet that's exactly what it does. Number 4. Cenote Angelita Cave Underwater River While most rivers are found above water, some can be found underneath it, and one of them is within the Black Sea. Head to Cenote Angelita Cave in the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico if you're curious about it, but be warned, it's not exactly what you'd think. Now, technically speaking, this flowing body of water actually isn't a river, but it does seem that way when you view it from a certain angle. What is truly going on, though, is a mixture of salt water and hydrogen sulfide that causes the salt water and the fresh water that's in the area to separate, thus making it seem like the area is moving like a river. The cloud of smoke that is made via this process is what helps sell the illusion of the underwater river, and it's what brings many divers down to it because it makes the area seem more haunting and alive. To reach the spot, you have to travel down 60 feet into the waters, and through that perspective, you'll go from crystal clear waters to a ghostly forest over a period of time, getting creepier and creepier with each move that you make towards it.
Number 3. Atlantic Goliath Grouper The Atlantic Goliath Grouper is a species of fish that are found in usually tropical areas of water that are close to the surface, and they prefer to live in areas like coral reefs, artificial reefs, and places where getting prey is rather easy. They grow to be 8 feet in length, and they use that length to mess with fish, and even divers that get a bit too close to them or interfere with their hunting ways. Diver Arif Sabir was with his wife off the coast of Florida and was spear fishing. After getting a fish with the spear, an Atlantic Goliath grouper suddenly appeared and approached the diver, even swimming by him and circling around so it could look him square in the face. But Arif wasn't phased and tried to swim to the surface. The grouper followed him, and though Arif noticed this, he didn't feel he was in any danger, but he was very wrong. The Atlantic Goliath grouper lunged out, grabbing the fin of the diver and ripped it right off his foot. Then the grouper rushed forward and ate both the fish and the spear it was on, showing just how quick and dangerous this particular fish can be. Once it had gotten done with its meal, it rushed off, leaving the two divers alone. Sabir would find his spear in a sandbank about a quarter of a mile away from the attack after a while. This was no doubt a very scary and creepy experience for the divers because it escalated very quickly and they didn't even have time to truly react. Plus, there have even been many cases of people being stalked or even attacked by groupers such as this one because they perceived them as a threat, which must have been a creepy sight because of their length and apparent speed. The divers, though, were fine and the lesson was learned. Number 2. Underwater Cemeteries It may feel odd to hear that there are cemeteries underwater. But given the course of history and lands rising and falling beneath the waves, it honestly happens more than you might expect. An example of this is in the Philippines, where the eruption of Mount Vulcan literally sunk a city and its cemetery below the waters. Because they couldn't be recovered, they built a man-made piece of land with a cross to honor them. And there are many more examples of that across the world. What might creep out many more, though, is that there's a place off Miami, Florida called the Neptune Memorial Reef, and it's an artificial cemetery that people can honestly pay to be buried in. Most times, it's because the people love the ocean and want to be in it versus the ground. An interesting way to be remembered, no doubt. Number 1. Dead Bodies There are many things that people don't want to find underwater, but one of the most creepy and harrowing things by far are that of dead bodies. They get there in a variety of ways, from the intentional to the accidental, but almost always, they're fine. At times, there are even bodies found by divers of other divers. And of course, certain police forces have divers on hand for them to go and dredge up rivers and lakes looking for things that don't belong there. One can only imagine what goes through their minds when they do indeed find these bodies. But it likely isn't pleasant though, especially when they're found in places like underwater caves where you don't have the space to freak out and process what you've seen. Thanks for watching. What did you think of this look at underwater discoveries by divers? Have you ever found anything creepy underwater? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to Worldlist and we'll see you next time on the channel.